Hi, everyone. Welcome to the space. And thanks for joining the first HN Powerhouse podcast session. We'll be holding a regular recorded Twitter space, podcasts, and YouTube videos to discuss all things Web3. I'll we'll focus on topics surrounding women and Asians in the space. I'm Joyce Young. I'm a photographer, film producer, and podcaster. Very thrilled to be partnering with HN on this new podcast. And co-hosting with me is Nicole, founder of HN, a beautiful NFT collection of the artwork by Mr. Hike, celebrating diversity and female empowerment while focusing Focusing on building community. So before we introduce our guest today, I'm going to pass it over to Nicole for a few words and to talk a bit more about um, the background about Asian. Hey everybody, so it's Nicole here, founder of Asian. Our NFT project, we have minted out and we have a total of 8,888 of NFTs. So they are all beautifully crafted. These representing women and the rich Asian cultures that we have. So I got into crypto really early when I was still in high school, about like 16 in 2013. Ever since, I have always been passionate about the space. So when I found out about NFTs, it was a whole new world for me. So I'm really happy to be able to reach out and connect with so many inspiring individuals like yourself, Kelly and Joyce. You know, both of you uh, started off by supporting Asian, you know, being an Asian holder. So that is something that I'm so happy that the project, you know, able to resemble with a lot of girls that are in the NFT space. At the same time, I'm really I'm really excited of this partnership with Joyce. This will be our first podcast. So yeah, happy to have you here as well, Kelly. I'm a huge fan of you and half of our team really loves you as well. Hi guys, thank awesome. you. Thank you so much for having me. It's nice to hear your voice finally, Nicole. <laughs> and it's so nice to meet you, Joyce. And it's an honor to be the first guest of this podcast. I'm Kelly Chung. I'm based in Hong Kong and I grew up in the States. I guess some background with my, I began with Crypt 2018, made my first investment in the crypto world. I was always the holder. I didn't really <laughs> trade back and forth and until NFTs came along and it it has taught me a lot and it kind of gave me even more exposure to the crypto world. I got to know NFTs during quarantine and I was coming back from Chicago, where my hometown is, to Hong Kong. And it was 21 days of quarantine, so it was a lot of time for me to look into NFTs. And luckily, I had a friend who was very generous with his time and his knowledge. In this space, I've met so many creative people and people who are just passionate about doing something for, for the space. Awesome. It's great to speak with you, Kelly, as well. So so that's a very exciting, uh, interesting story. And you, you both actually started very early for the space, right? A few years ago. Can you explain then a bit more about your experience and kind of the journey? If people have been following me, I my real life job is an actress, actually, but I love gaming. I have a younger brother, so I guess that's something that we just always did together. So when I started streaming, I thought it would just be something that was fun to do. It would just be cool to share and it ended up making a lot of noise because I think just the juxtaposition of my public image, you know, being a pageant girl and being an actress and hosting lifestyle show is very different from my image as a gamer. So when it came to crypto and NFTs, when I first first started last year, November, there was not as many resources as today. The space moves so fast. Even back then, I felt like I didn't have a lot of resources to go on. So, but luckily, like I mentioned, I had a friend. But now I think there are a lot of resources like YouTube videos and Medium articles. And, you know, recently I even read like a super informative article on the New York Times. So the masses are getting more and more interested in the space. So in terms of NFTs, I'm seeing them, you know, the space changing every day. People are becoming smarter and projects have to provide more and people are becoming more and more demanding in what they are choosing to invest in. So there are a lot of smart people here and I'm always so impressed by everyone. I feel like I'm still a beginner because things are happening every day. Absolutely. I, I hear what you you're saying actually it's just uh you know they say like one month is like a year right in the space and uh, i started in february and it's just been amazing and hn's one of the early ones and uh you know, proud holder um and you know just amazing uh community um are there any uh pitfalls i guess kind of like a word of caution to to those that are coming in um, i think everyone's witnessing that people are paying more and more attention and the masses are getting into the space they're more 
big brands coming in to collaborate. And with more people coming in, they're just besides like you know all these great creative ideas happening every day and new things coming up. There are also a lot of new scams that are happening. People are so creative. The scammers are so creative. So I think like maybe newcomers, one thing to really learn is you know how to keep safe in the space. And it could be something simple like just turning off your DMs on Discord, which I realized that a lot of people didn't know that there's like one button that you press and it stops all the DMs from all the different groups. Like some people still they've been in the space. So I think a really basic like security lesson is very important for beginners to to learn before they start investing. That is so true. I've seen so many kind of notes on、uh, Discord and you know certain Discords being hacked, double checking on Twitter, making sure you know don't don't click on that link. So it's it's definitely a great note that people should be very careful and just those new in the space. You know you kind of be naive and go oh I'm just gonna follow this and click on this. So so I want to turn into Cole as well. What what are your big moments and or challenges that you remember and how did you guys overcome that? I feel that even until today I totally relate with. Kelly, so even you said that you jumped in on November, and I actually joined around like early March and March April. I still don't know about the space. Like every day, I'm still learning. Like sometimes when I when I read something online, I'm like, no way, you know. It's like this space still blows my mind. Like I think this is something that I really like about this space is that every day it's evolving. Every day there is a new thing to learn about. It's like the other day I saw that there is. One thing that is going around, which is like step to earn, and then right now I think I hear there is one that is called like brief to earn. You can like literally brief and and, and earn tokens. I mean that is some of the few things that is really intrigued about this space. But for my challenges creating the collection, there is there is a lot of them. Even with my own personal journey, I have been scammed like so many times. I lose count. There was just one time someone actually sent me like a PDF file. I thought it was a PDF file. I opened it and it was a link. And it got me into a website, and then I look at my wallet, and then you know things are just gone. These are some of the things that people usually don't address about last time because they were kind of embarrassed that oh people might laugh at me.、Uh, there was even one time where、uh, my Discord actually got hacked, and one of the mod or、uh, someone in the community actually got me banned. Someone then reached out to me, and I was clicking links and whatnot, and then they just had full control, full access of my account, and they were trying to scam members in our. Official Discord, you know the Asian Discord. So I had to delete the whole account and I had to create a new one. This happened、uh, like two months ago. In this space, because it's so new and and everyone is still learning, this is why a lot of people are. Bound to get scammed, but to me, I do see this as a positive side. Where you know, I mean, you need to get scammed at least once to be able to like be vigilant and to be able to learn how to not get scammed. Yeah, but for in terms of my project, because I started the project on September last year, and at that time it was really hard for us to look for like a dev because there was so little out there.、But、the first dev that we connected with, he was overcharging us by a lot. Thankfully, we didn't go through with that, and we. We got another dub. So true, and in terms of the scam, it's it's. So scary. I mean, every day, as I said, like in different discords, and there's always someone sending something. It's like, oh my gosh, shut down. And and what Kelly mentioned too, just turn off the DM. And also, then there are different ways to disconnect sites from your wallet, right? So if something happens, just go and disconnect everything. So it is quite interesting what can happen and the tricks that can make sure to protect yourself. I mean, speaking, saying you know, with Discord and and, and Twitter, those are two main areas where、uh, I guess NFT and Web three people get together. How do you stay connected, Kelly? Are, are those the main Places do you spend a lot of time in those、uh, channels,、uh, or is it kind of like a lot in the beginning, and then kind of had to pick and choose? Yeah, I'm actually on Discord a lot. I started bringing my laptop to work now, <laughs> so when I'm on set, I'm on break. I'm like on my laptop and on Discord. That's probably not very good for <laughs> for my job. It's I think Discord is a place where you keep an ear to the ground regarding everything that's happening in the space. So when you're choosing to be in the space and to invest in Projects, I think it's really important to check Discord and get you know sentiment of on how everything's moving and it's moving so fast. So in terms of my followers, I think most of my following is on Instagram and sometimes I do post here and there about NFTs. But 
I think a lot of people aren't in the space. So without the knowledge of what NFTs are, I think me post any projects may seem like I'm shilling to them, which I think a lot of influencers do on IG. And I feel like I have a certain responsibility to the people who follow me. And there are young girls out there or young people out there that I don't want to keep posting about something and they end up aping into anything without having done any research. So after I started in the NFTs, I opened a Twitter account. My Twitter account only posts NFT related content. So when I'm on Instagram and I post something about NFTs, I try to redirect people to go to my Twitter. I think Twitter is not very widely used in Asia, especially in Hong Kong. But I feel like if they were interested, they would want to go on Twitter and see what I post about. So I don't try to force my NFT content to everyone on IG. So on my usual social media, I keep it more about my life and work. And yeah, and I started a YouTube channel recently too. So I'm hoping to bring a bit of just basic knowledge to people who are interested, maybe to use, you know, some influence that I have in Hong Kong to provide some resources. Yeah, that's amazing. And I uh, wanted to ask you to expand on that. Um, uh, so previously, it was more about gaming. Um, but you know, switch it to more of the NFT content, a great content for newbies, right? So speaking of what, you know, people should watch out for or, or what should learn. And I've heard your, you know, YouTube and it's amazing because when I was learning, I was like, oh my God, what is this? Right? I go to uh, Discord and I have to go Google <laughs> on the <laughs> side just to make sure I'm not saying anything, you know, different. So um, yeah, so maybe explain a bit more about um, your, your content and uh, where you want to take it. I think once I started posting about NFTs, a lot of people reached out to me asking either what are NFTs or or like and it's NFTs are a scam, <laughs> you know, it's either of those two. So I realized that people still have a lot of misconceptions on what NFTs are and what they do. It's so much more than just the PFP projects. You know, I'm lucky that because of my in real life job, I'm able to have a reach. So I guess what I'm aiming to do is to help educate the masses on what the blockchain is and what it can do for us and how it can apply to our lives. And I'm not an expert by any means. And I try to think of ways to talk about the different topics and on NFTs in a way that beginners like who I was in November can wrap their heads around. I try to put things in very uncomplicated forms, very relatable terms, and I want to provide a resource where people can easily understand this technology. That was what I thought was lacking when I first started, and especially coming from a female voice. Yeah, I actually uh, also wanted to expand on, uh, you mentioned a female voice. Do you see, oh, I guess it's mentioned that's a lot more male ratio in the space but is that uh, your experience and do you see that changing uh, rapidly month over month yeah I think I started in the space like two months a month or two before the you know there was like, like a female project meta that happened suddenly and before that I think yeah definitely uh, even with all the female led projects out there now like HN and all these women and all these amazing projects I'm sure the owners are still mostly male i think it is a really male dominated place. Yeah, I see it changing. And it's been great to witness. And I think on Twitter, too, like you see more and more, more women in Web3 and NFTs, like speaking out and being active in the space. So it's really, really nice to be a part of the movement. Awesome. That's great. And that's why we want to create the space, you know, also for you to put up the content on YouTube. So I think collectively, we can advance this a bit. Um, and I want to turn to Nicole. I mean, obviously, you're a female founder uh, of this company concept uh, NFT, uh, maybe you can explain a bit more about your journey and uh, what you see in the changing in the past few months. So when I first started the space, my friend James was the one that introduced me to the space. He was so early, he minted like a few bought apes back then. He told me, he's like, Nicole, you know, you need to get this MetaMask wallet, you need to get Eve, you need to mint this monkey. And I was like, wait, what? You know, and then I didn't study like, oh, you know, NFTs are actually digitalized asset where you can own it and you can use it as your profile picture picture no one else can take it away from you and you own it like it lives on the blockchain forever so the first thing that I did was I downloaded MetaMask I I mean I got some ETH in my wallet and um, I didn't mint 
wasn't the ape, but I was in OpenSea. I was on Rarity Tools, you know, looking at all the other, other projects that were coming up. I wanted to find something that resonates with me, something elegant. And then I was looking for like a female kind of vibe, you know, um, feminine, pink, you know. And back then it was like, like everything was like pixelated. It was like robots and, you know, um, just like all the really cool stuff. So then when I was jumping onto the other communities to kind of connect with people that are in the space, I was into a lot of the Discord and I had my name as Nicole. And each time when I say hi, people will tag me and be like, hey, you know, this is not a girl's, this is guys only and stuff like that. So that is what I experienced in the space. And then at the same time, it was not just, not just that, it was like the topics as well because they were all guys, right? And, you know, there is nothing wrong with that. But all the topics, they were all talking about like, oh, chilling with a beer and then, you know, playing darts, you know, like smoking weed and things. I couldn't connect with that part of community. So basically, that is what inspired me to start my own. I see there's a huge gender gap and also in terms of like the East and the West as well. They didn't really showcase the Asian cultures like there wasn't any profile picture NFT collection that was embracing the Asian cultures so for myself um, I grew up in Malaysia so if you have been to Malaysia it's a multiracial country so three of our largest races are the Chinese the Indians and the Malay so I grew up uh, exposed to a lot of traditions and cultures and heritage and food that is something that I wanted to uh, showcase you know to bring into the web tree so that is how the whole project came about and even our name our name Asian is actually just Asian with an eight so I guess right now my short-term goal is to not only to establish ourselves in the web tree space but to also kind of get exposure in the real world in the web 2 space as well especially in Asia because um, NFTs and cryptos are not as mainstream as in the West like men and women ratio as well so my friends like my girlfriends around me you know so every time I talk about crypto and NFTs they just think that I talk you know like I'm in another world you know speaking another language I'm pretty sure you girls can relate as well so yeah hopefully you know we will be able to get more and more people on board in the space this year I do see there's a trend coming where more Asian com companies, brand, prominent figures, they're all jumping into the space. So this is a good sign. I feel we are on the right track. That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, I, I do see quite a lot coming up. So that's very exciting. And artwork for Asians is amazing. So it's great representation of the done in Asia. I love it. While speaking of your collection, I know there's a special bespoke Asian uh, NFT of you, Kelly. Um, so how, how did you guys first get into contact? And what's your experience in being a holder? With my new Twitter account, was it you, the Nicole, that DM'd me or someone on your team that DM'd me? We reach out to you. Definitely, we reach out to you. As I mentioned, half yeah. of the team, they saw that you were posting thing about NFTs in your story they said like oh like we need to get Kelly in and that is where they reach out to you uh, we reach out to you on Instagram and on Twitter and then you instantly replied our Twitter and you were like yeah. is this fake is this a fake account uh, because back then your, your Twitter was like really new I think you just started yeah. so we we're like oh this could be a fake account you know but later on we found out that oh you're the real deal and that is how we connected yeah so I'm glad you guys found me <laughs> and reached out to me because I do read the messages that I get and I'm really open to hearing about different projects I think there are a lot of projects that I don't align with but H and definitely stood out to me yeah and you guys were so me and welcomed me with open arms <laughs> it just started in the space so like just seeing Asian celebrating and showcasing Asian culture and it's done so beautifully and I felt a sense of pride when I saw your project in the space and the art by Mr. Hike really grabbed me and growing up I don't know if you guys with your families did you guys watch like those period dramas you know the traditional like Chinese garments and headpieces those are had have always been so beautiful beautiful to me and now I work for the TV production that created a lot of these shows that I watched when I was growing up and I see these costumes in real life and I still really love them so like to see these pieces on an NFT project on an NFT I just thought it was so beautifully presented this um, PFP from your collection is actually one that I use very often uh, it's a modern one with slicked back short hair and a bikini top and an off off shoulder robe and you know I recently cut my hair for work and I just thought that was like the perfect web 3 me so like the art of course really impressed me looking at the whole collection I saw a lot of great representation of different cultures across Asia and, and 
And with the one of one that Mr. Hyde created for me, I, I love it so much because it features me and my pets. <laughs> so now we live on the blockchain forever. So I'm just so thankful that, you know, you guys reached out to me and so honored to be here. I've been a fan since. I think when you guys reached out to me, it was still, you guys were still minting out. So it was just really great to witness that last two days of your mint out and seeing people in the space rallying behind a project that are focused on the Asian culture and focused on women. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, for you for your one on one piece, I just want to let the audience know that if you look up on the pinned tweet, you can see that her bespoke piece. There is like two two pets there. It's Nala and um, Louis, Louis, oh, Louis, yeah. Louis and, and Nala. Yeah. So cute, you know. I'm so glad that you really like the bespoke piece. Mr. Hike, which is our lead artist, is actually a huge fan of you. He's just really, really happy to have you part of our collection. Yeah, you guys have done a really great job. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Beautiful artwork, all the different pieces and all the details. I I have to stop myself from buying more. (laughs) So every single piece, like, oh, I want that. But yeah, a beautiful one-on-one for Kelly as well. I mean, speaking of, you know, collection then, uh, Kelly, like, is it mostly the artwork or, uh, you know, what other factors do you mainly uh, weigh in? Yeah, I think everything plays into what I look for. The art has to appeal to me. So even if it goes to and I, but I'm still really happy to have it in my wallet I think I can live with that like you know no regrets besides you know investing in this art I think it's a lot of it is investing in the founder mm-hmm. you're basically trusting that the person leading the project is gonna take it somewhere it's gonna bring value you're you're supporting that person behind the project so yeah it's amazing to see the Asian team like doing everything they can to add value to the project and I see how hard they work on their discord and it's impressive Amazing. Well, how do you see the future of the NFT market or some trends? I guess it's a big question, but in terms of like maybe even near future or even between the different kind of uh, currencies, you see, you know, Solana's a flow. Does that like uh, compare, I guess, or compete well with the ETH market? Yeah, you know, I think the space is so unpredictable and nobody <laughs> really knows what's going to happen. But I think NFTs as a technology, I think it's here to stay. I think a lot of the projects that we see out there may, you know, fade away and become irrelevant. You know, I see every single person having it someday and they'll hold access to everything in our lives. You know, every day I, you know, run into situations and I think, oh my God, this would be so much more efficient and easier if we just did this on the blockchain and I had this in my wallet, then I don't have to carry these papers and carry, you know, the ID and stuff. So even deeds to our properties or medical records, I think just everything. I think the full potential of what NFTs can do, there's just so many creative ways and I can't wait to witness it and I guess that's why I'm here because when I first learned about NFTs I didn't want to just watch it from the sidelines I want to be a part of it and I think now I'm here and I can't wait to see what you know great founders like Nicole can lead us so true but Nicole um, what do you uh, see as the kind of near future for the NFT market yeah wow this is a this is this is a good question to me I see that in the next couple of months there will be more solid projects coming in where you know will be backed by companies that have been around for many many years they will be using the nft technology you know even in retail or you know jumping into the metaverse setting up their store because we participated in the first ever largest fashion week last month on the central land hosted by boston protocol alongside uh, there was tommy hilfiger asic you know all these other household brands coming in i do see that the space will get more mature as well the existing nft project because right now we are all it's mostly community building So I do foresee that um, in the future, we will all need to pivot and uh, find out our own niche um, in order to survive and sustain in the space. So yeah, this is this is an exciting journey. Yeah, every day, as we're saying, changes so much, right? And there's all these different trends come up. So it's hard to keep up and it's hard to kind of weigh through all the, you know, whether certain things are true or not. So Kelly, in terms of 
merging the two worlds of, of gaming, NFT, and do you do uh, a lot of that in, in, I guess, in the different like meta, meta worlds, metaverse? Well, I definitely still game a lot, <laughs> even though I barely sleep with NFTs and work. So yeah, gaming is, is something that I love to do. And in terms of GameFi, like I think it's going to change the way that gaming may potentially even make us money. <laughs> like we can game for a living and and that's really exciting to me. And uh, using the VR, um, my boyfriend and I have an Oculus and he's a huge fan of the Oculus. He's on there every day. And from that, like, you know, I can totally see the metaverse happening. So another thing that I look for when I invest in, you know, an NFT project is like, I always, I'm looking forward to having my own space in the metaverse and having my own, you know, home and like my gallery. So like, I'm always like buying to see, wow, this would look really great. Um, on my metaverse wall <laughs> you know what I've always wanted to get the oculus but I never really you know got myself to get it I feel that a lot of the things will actually be on the metaverse you know and you should you should definitely get your own space in the metaverse so that we can all hang out to like you know Kelly's place right and we can all chill and hang out yeah at your home you know it's gonna be so cool yeah and I stay home most of the time already <laughs> in real life and so I can't wait to have a metaverse home and stay there too and then just invite people to come visit me and I, I love decorating so you know when it comes to blockchain and the metaverse I think there's no limit in what we can do and I think the pandemic definitely helped accelerate a lot of that in terms of well you're at home already and so now I kind of imagine another you know the secondary world how it would look like and what we can do with that a lot of us realize that there's a lot of things that could be done you know even there was a lot of like meetings that could have just you know go through as an email right and this is why I would say that humankind has been becoming more I'm um, not to say lazy, but maybe um, like we work smarter, right? So with the help of Metaverse, being able to connect with people virtually in the space at the same time, even for like Fashion Week, right? What we had is we had booths of neighboring stores. And what you can do is you can just go with your friends in the Metaverse and walk around and choose a dress and buy them and it will actually be delivered to your home. So that was the concept that we did. And it was really fun. I do see that this is the future. You know, like right now, all the the, um, you know, in terms of e-commerce, everything, it's all online, like on the website. But in the future, everything will be integrated and it will all be in like a center hub with the metaverse where you can just walk around in like an endless fashion district where you can shop, you know, even order food and then get, get food delivered to your house. Yeah, so that is really exciting for me. Yeah, that is so crazy, right? Just as you're saying, um, it is the Matrix and all those sci-fi stories coming true. <laughs> yeah, so this is why we are in the midst of developing our Asian town as well. You know how every country there is a Chinatown. So this is why I want to have like a China, like an Asian town in all of the metaverse. So we're in the midst of contacting all of the metaverse out there to have our Asian town there, you know, and who knows, we, we might even act as like a landmark in the metaverse. We have like this whole like idea of a museum and a fashion district and a park and an event space and who knows we can even host our podcast there in the future or even like a twitter ama we can just all go there with our oculus walk around you know go to kelly's house and stuff like that <laughs> yeah let's party in the middle yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> totally that'd be awesome <laughs> have different you know change outfits and whatnot right there <laughs> instantaneously yeah i'm ready you know let's let's do that let's do Oh, that, would, that would be so fun that would be really really fun you know and we don't have to be in like the same country we can like, we don't even have to leave the house and we can still have fun you know looking forward to the Asian town and visiting <laughs> Kelly's place <laughs> I'm inviting <Yes>. myself <laughs> <laughs> so I mean speaking of future projects then like what's next on the YouTube what can we expect in terms of the next episodes and content wise what, what are you building out on, on your channel so a few episodes coming up already uh, one the next one oh actually one should be out right now I release every Friday night in Hong Kong. It's about setting up a wallet, setting up a MetaMask wallet. So I think everyone that's listening right now have been in the space, but there's still a lot of people around us 
that are just starting or just curious. So this episode is about creating a wallet. I think the next episode may be about how to micro criteria in researching an NFT project. And there is another one about security, which we mentioned before too. So when I was writing that, the security one, it was so long because there's so many scams out there. I wanted to include everything to like get people to watch out for all of them. But, you know, it was impossible to fit into just one episode. It was like six pages. I tried my best to include all the main ones. So my introduction for NFTs may be something that's easy to understand that you can send to friends who have no idea what NFTs are. And when you try explaining to them, they still don't get it. Maybe my video would help, hopefully. I feel that, you know, there is not enough content out there for people to really trust and really kind of look at. I feel that there is there is still not enough trusted individual that you can go back and look and learn about NFTs and stuff because I do get so many DMs, you know, people asking me, oh, how do I learn about NFTs? Who should I watch? And so yeah, I'm really happy that you're doing this. You know, I'm I'm looking forward to watch that video, you know. Thank you. Oh, and besides um, the content that I write and I produce every for every week, I'm planning on having um, interviews with project owners. So I talked to Nicole and would be an honor to have you on as a guest to interview and talk about H and with my followers. Yeah, definitely. I would I would be there. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And there's three topics. Totally looking forward. And as you said for newbie, I think the first two I've watched and you really boil it down to the, the simple sound bites, easier to understand. So hopefully I think people can see it and watch it and, and go, well, this is you know, I can do it. I could get into the space, at least set it up, research it a little bit and let's see how it goes, right? And it's not so intimidating after all. And in terms of what we're talking about, like Kelly, do you see um from you know your few months of involvement a lot more people getting involved in Hong Kong as well or does it still feel like it's it's a bit slower than I guess other countries? Yeah, I think it's also the language barrier that um, I think the NFT space a lot of the information out there and even on Twitter on, on and on Discord it's a lot of English so it's hard to understand when your first language is not English because there is a lot of slang <laughs> like besides the slang that I mentioned in my YouTube video there is like the way native English speakers talk that it would be hard to comprehend for Chinese speakers. And I hear a lot of that from the people around me that they go on Discord and there's it's overwhelming because every server has like so so many different channels, like they don't even know where to begin. I, I think there are some really experienced people in crypto and NFTs in Hong Kong, but they're also most of the people here don't really NFTs are. And I think it happens a lot in the space. There are a lot of cash grabs and uh, Hong Kong has a lot of those. So even if you're interested in the beginning and you try it, but you get burned and you get scammed, you get turned off. You may never turn back and try again because you lost so much money and you know you just threw it down the drain there's still some work to be done and some maybe that's what i'm trying to accomplish also is to help provide a resource for the people here so like i know there's some really really great projects and people may not know and just think they're international but they're founded by asian people like people from taiwan people from singapore even people from hong kong it's it's great to see all these asian projects I I guess like even even when I was talking about NFTs around my friends, you know, and they're like, oh, NFTs are a scam. And I was like, why? And then, I mean, they just they just got rugged. And then later on, kind of put it in their mindset that, oh, NFTs are a scam, right? Um, so I do agree with you on, on that point. So this is why like even, even for our Discord, we do know that there's a lot of people that like English may not be their first language. So with our Discord, we have multiple channels in our Discord. And for our announcement as well, we do announce it in English and in Chinese hopefully that will be able to we will be able to get more people in in our discord to join the NFT space so I would say that the language barrier is still there but I do see that there is more and more people that are in the space making content in different languages and stuff like that so yeah you know overall we are we are in the right track with that also I want to ask Nicole what are kind of the next steps, um, immediate steps. I see a lot of, you know, activity, a lot of partnerships lately and amazing that you're, you and your team have been doing. Uh, any sneak peek, um, anything coming up in the next few weeks? Oh, yeah, there is um, 
quite a few things that you, that we are working on. Um, ever since the Fashion Week, uh, we were able to open a lot of uh, doors for us. We were able to connect with you know so many people in the space, so many industry leaders. Moving forward, we will be looking toward. I mean, I don't want to spill too much beans, but IPs and more more towards the retail side. To me, I feel that right now there is still not enough exposure of our brand and, and NFTs in general in the real world. So that is the only way that we can bridge having it as a physical product, uh, something tangible, having it in the billboard. So yeah, this is really exciting. You know, stay tuned. So excited to hear more about that. And uh, and with that, any last words of advice uh, from both Kelly and Nicole in terms of maybe newbies or even those in just a couple months? But- um, I think for people that are curious about the space, I think the best way to learn is just to dive in, you know, how you judge a project, how you determine your buy price or sell price, if you're investing or what kind of project is it our project, a lot of it is subjective. I think you gain that with the experience that you spend in the space. So I think if you're curious, just don't put too much money in, but just dive in and kind of feel the space for yourself and find a good project. You find a first good project project to be a part of because I think I got lucky with the first project that I ever bought like the community was very supportive and welcoming and gave me a lot of good tips so just join us <laughs> so I guess um, last few words would be to follow Kelly's YouTube channel if you want to know more about NFTs follow our upcoming Asian powerhouse podcast so Joyce and I we will be hosting uh, more of these more frequently we will be getting more people that are in the web tree space along to share their journey with us and if you don't know which nfts to buy buy asian nfts so right now close to um, mid price so it was it's quite affordable so yeah happy to have you part of our community absolutely amazing asian it's, it's great great community and you guys have made it a really good experience for me as well when i first joined and i was kind of clueless still kind of clueless but <laughs> learning more and i love these conversations so thank you stay tuned uh follow all of us and uh thank you very much thank you kelly so much for the discussion great insights thank you nice to meet you joyce and thank you for having me nicole thank you 